<laughs> Welcome to Delightful! The big spooky Halloween collaboration is back this year! So many fellow doll YouTubers, each with their own Halloween special, just waiting for you to watch! But more about that at the end. Let me show you what I decided to make first. The past couple of years have been quite sculpture-intensive dolls, and seeing as that's sort of become my norm lately, I thought I'd trick-or-treat myself to a simple character this time around. Well, I still remake the character from head to toe, you know, reroute, fresh face, new outfit. That's a simple project now, is it? <laughs> How times have changed! Here's the concept art. Now, I'll be honest, I envision this character in a straightforward black and orange getup with bright pumpkin orange hair. But when I got out my materials, I was shocked to find that I don't have orange nylon hair. Well, I have some, but not enough. So, back to the drawing board to do some color studies. I found myself quite liking number four there. The green skin helped bring in more color and balance out a secondary colors palette. But I imagine this doll is more of a witch in training as opposed to a Wizard of Oz type character. Plus, I just made a green skin doll. Not to mention we've got Casta Fierce over there, don't want to steal her spotlight. So I tried to bring in more green to the normal skin tone designs on the accessories. After combining all of my favorite elements, here's the final look. A nice balance of colors despite no orange hair, I hope you agree. Let's begin the transformation! Bring in the sacrifice! This is a young character, a witch just learning her spells and potions, so I thought Howleen Wolf from Monster High is an appropriate base doll. She's got the shorter little sister body type. To the workstation. Dunk the doll in hot water to soften the vinyl head, then yank it off. Watch out, it's hot. Use 100% acetone to remove the factory painted face. If you're lucky, you can pull an entire eye off in one swoop. Aw, oh, not great this time. I love Howleen's face sculpt. Such a cute button nose. Next, take a stick and scrape around the inside of the head, tugging out stubble and loosening the remaining glue that's still inside. Then fish out the gunk. You can keep that hot water handy to re-soften the neck area to keep things flexible. Time for hair! Yes, I made sure I had purple. <laughs> we'll be combining two beautiful nylon hanks from dollyhair.com and using a number 7 needle with our reroute tool from thedollplanet.com. But first, to cover those holes in the doll's head. The original character had wolf ears here, but I must have cut them off at some point in the past. I coat the area with glue, then lay down a purple patch of cotton fabric over the hole. I then seal the whole patch thoroughly with glue. Fair warning, they required some fixing as the reroute progressed, so it's not an ideal solution. I managed to make it work, though. So, lay the nylon hank out on the table, select a couple hairs and peel them away from the pile, then slip the plug onto your needle eye at the halfway point. Stick that into one of the holes, and that's it! A simple and repetitive task, much like knitting or weaving. This part can be kind of soothing. I actually counted the number of hairs I select for each plug, and it's an average of 25 hairs. I prefer to work around the hairline first, then fill in the scalp. To navigate the delicate patch area, I first prepare a hole with a needle, then slip in the nylon plug. Hopefully, these plugs on the outside of the patch that still pass through the vinyl will help hold it down. And of course, I plug a couple hairs into the whole cover itself, where it's the weakest. These will feel pretty loose and prone to falling out until you can get glue in the head. After that, I fill in the part. It always takes way more hair than you think. What's on screen now isn't nearly enough. I add the warmer magenta purple along the part for a subtle variety in color. Like highlights, I guess. Reroute complete! 
Seal the deal by pouring glue in through the neck hole and sloshing it around to ensure you coat all those loose plugs on the inside. I came back the next day to find the patches had leaked glue through to the hair on the outside. Oh no! Luckily, I was able to wash most of it out with a spot cleaning of soap and water. And luckily, this character's gonna wear a hat, so <laughs> we're good. With the hair done and bundled away, we can move right along to the face. Mask off the hair by tying and pinning a scrap of fabric tightly around the hairline. If sealant touches the doll hair, it can change the texture and discolor it. Step outside or into a ventilated area to spray the Mr. Super Clear sealant. Rotate the doll's head around at different angles to make sure you coat every surface. I like to start with two coats on the blank base. For younger characters, I tend to prefer more natural, no-makeup looks. But this is Halloween, so we're going in full goth! Start off with a bit of blushing on the cheeks, nose, lips, forehead, and some on the eye creases to breathe life into the static plastic. Next, I take a similar rusty brown color pencil to hesitantly sketch out the shapes of her eyes. Mark things out in a similar color and value to the skin tone at first, so that if you mess up, it's easy to erase. Then, once you feel confident, you can dive in with colors and darker shades. And, oh man, I've never built colors up this fast. The sealant must have taken really well this time. I'm doing all this on those first two base coats. How lucky. I sketch in her green iris, darken the lash line with a deep blue, and even block in the eye whites and eyebrows. I then sharpen my pencils into a fine point and delicately scratch on the lashes. Get out the pastels once again to bring some drama to her makeup game. I'm dusting on dark brown and black eyeshadow, and of course, the black lipstick. Mwah! I can't believe how far we got on those first layers. But at last, it's time for a fresh application of sealant. I use this fresh layer to darken up the eyebrows and lashes even more, to make them nice and fluffy. I also continue to build opacity and blend the gradient of her iris. Next, spooky little pupils. I want her to look cute with just a touch of mystery behind her gaze, and I think these small cat-like pupils accomplish just that. A couple highlights with a cream pencil help sharpen the edges. And of course, a dash of white gesso brings a glint to her eyes. One final spray of sealant will protect all that hard work, and the face is done! Let's set the head aside for now and sew together her clothes. I'll be using my tried and true steampunk Lolita dress pattern, which is available along with plenty of other patterns on my Etsy shop. Those of you who already have this pattern know that it's designed to fit the standard Monster High girl body. But I figure with a little more seam allowance around the bodice parts, we can size it up just a pinch to fit the slightly thicker little sister body type of the doll I'm using. It's already very close, so hopefully I'll only have to fudge it a little bit. <laughs> the pattern comes with a separate colored shirt garment and a high-waisted flared skirt. For the skirt pieces, I'm going to get a little fancy by deliberately placing the pattern pieces on this striped fabric. If I angle these right, I can align the black and orange stripes to form a zigzag pattern once the pieces are sewn together. The skirt comes with instructions for ruffles, but I'm going to leave those off and just utilize the base skirt pieces. Alright, let's sew everything together! Yes, yes, don't sew over pins, I can hear you saying. Come on, we all do it. In all seriousness, I have collided with a pin once or twice, and the ones I use are made of a soft metal, so they just bend downwards and get stuck in the machine. A bit annoying to fish back out, but not dangerous. Occasionally, I get questions on the yoke lining of the skirt garment, so allow me to clarify those steps here. Right sides together, pin the yoke to the top of the skirt. Then sew. Open it up like this, 
and continue folding it all the way over to the inside. This gives us both a nice finished edge on the waist and add structural reinforcement to the skirt if you really strap it on tight to the doll. Stitch the yoke to the back pieces at the raw edges, then follow the instructions to finish the skirt. The collar on the shirt can also be a bit tricky. Grab the collar at the shoulder seams and pop it towards you like this. Sew those together and now it looks like you've got an ugly seam facing the right side of the garment. Oh no! But in fact, you've done it right. Simply turn the collar down to reveal the finished edge and voila! A cute turned collar. Trim the seams and iron it flat to help it stay down. A couple more seams should finish up the shirt. Oh my gosh, these sleeves are tight. I think I made the ruffle at the cuff too large. Ah! Looks pretty cute. And check that out. I think all I need to do to make sure it fits the little sister body type is to add Velcro in the back without finishing the edge. The little sister dolls have a thicker waistline, so by not hemming the back edges, I've got enough space to work with. Yay! Now for some extra flourishes. I stitched together a roughly petticoat out of black cotton with a simple tie in the back. It will layer underneath and help fill out the skirt. I gave a subtle yellow highlight to the skirt in my drawing and I like the way that looks, so I'm going to manually paint that onto the real skirt using watered down acrylic paints. It's a subtle color shift, but it adds a lot. For her stockings, well, I'm going to use actual stockings. I cut out roughly doll leg sized rectangles from the waistband area of these spent stockings. The stretchy fabric up there is thicker, so that should help it look more like leggings on a doll scale. Turn down and hem the edges at the top. Use a zigzag stitch, that is to say, go back and forth from side to side instead of in a straight line when sewing stretchy fabric. This maintains the stretch, see? Now, wrong sides out, pin the rectangles around your doll's legs. Then it's just a matter of sewing along the leg silhouette. Keep in mind we will turn these right side out, so the thickness of your seam allowance will end up on the inside. However, if you're using stretchy fabric, you can stitch these pretty tight to your doll's legs and still get a good fit. I stitch all the way up and back down again so that I've got a solid line of stitches on both sides. This way it's nicely sealed and I know it won't gap open. Turn them right side out and her leggings are done! Or I guess they're thigh-high leggings? Or socks? Why are there so many terms for legwear? <laughs> you know what they are. Now for the piece de resistance, to top it all off, the witch hat. This template is available for free and you can download it off my Google Drive if you're looking to make a witch hat of your own this Halloween. I made this prototype first to perfect the pattern and it doesn't look half bad in white. You'll need fabric, some kind of fusible web, interfacing, and a touch of fabric glue. I'm using Easy Steam too, but instructions for your fusible web may be different. I trace and cut out one piece of web, stick one side to the fabric, and cut once again. I cut one more ring out of fabric only. The cone of the hat is also a simple shape, but my design calls for a little something extra. So in my case, I divide the pattern into thirds, and accounting for seam allowance, sew the strips together to once again become a single pattern piece. I then cut one more cone out of interfacing. You should have two circles and two cones. Alternatively, if you're using fusible interfacing, the cone may already be fused into one piece. Lay the fabric over the interfacing, fold it in half, right sides together, and sew down the back seam. Your seam allowance should be about 8 millimeters, or just the width of the presser foot to the edge. 
Trim the excess nice and close to your stitches if you really want a sharp point, then flip it right side out. Now's a good time to seal the interfacing and cloth together at the edge. Run a line of glue around the rim and press. Obviously you don't need to do this with fusible interfacing. Take your cone and insert it into the piece with fusible webbing. Fit it through the hole until it's nice and snug, then trim the excess into small tabs. To make these last steps easier, cut one more ring out of cardstock to use as a support. Press the tabs splayed open and dab glue onto each one. Remove the cone. Peel away the backing on the easy steam to reveal the sticky surface. Reinsert the cone and mash the tabs down. Lastly, take the remaining ring of fabric and place it on top. All stuck together! To finalize the bond, I press the layers together with my iron. Trim up the excess and ta-da! Beautiful witch hat! Obviously I was going for candy corn, but it ended up looking more like a traffic cone. I didn't see that coming. The hat will stay on just like this, but because I think it looks cute, I sew on two lengths of ribbon to either side of the cone. These will tie underneath the doll's chin. Kind of gives it an old-timey pilgrim sort of vibe too, which seems appropriate. The outfit is almost done! Accessories are the only thing left to make. These are resin prints of her wand and spellbook covers designed by me and sculpted slash printed by my wonderful husband. As for shoes, we'll be repainting these red pumps. Everything gets a layer or two of primer for starters. Once that's dry, I go over a couple times and pick out the sculpted details with acrylic paints. Originally, the shoes were apple-themed, so they cross over nicely into a spooky pumpkin theme when repainted. Or maybe more like a poison apple since I went with purple and green. <laughs> Either way, very witchy looking. These get a layer of varnish once I'm done. The wand gets much the same treatment, just a simple wood-like paint job with edge highlights to bring out the detail. A touch of shiny silver paint brings out the details on her spellbook covers. And of course, the gems in the corners are green, our accent color. I cut down a small stack of computer paper, which I fold over into signatures of four pages each. Five signatures look sufficient, so I clamp them together and saw the sides to make the holes. Then, taking my needle and thread, I sew the signatures together to form the text block. I didn't really plan ahead, and to be honest, I have bound much better books. If you want a full tutorial, I've got a video for that. It's a bit dated at this point, but the information is still good. Looks nice. Too nice. Whack the sides with a metal ruler to distress the pages and prematurely age the paper. Using a thin faux leather, I glue a strip to the inner cover, place the text block inside, and place the back cover on top. Then I glue the first and last pages of the text block to the covers, And just for extravagance, I add a velvety red end sheet to each cover. Aw, oh, isn't it charming? Just pretend it's full of spells for now. I'll write some in later. Using Sculpey clay, I form two tiny ears and candy corn earring shapes with wire inside, then bake them. Next, I add paint. Don't you think these candy corn earrings are really cute? I'm tempted to make a human-sized pair for myself. 
trim and bend the wires into tiny loops. Then add one more length of wire with a loop on the end. Pierce the ears. <laughs> Can you imagine if at the mall they took out a giant drill to pierce your ears? Yikes! Feed the wire through, trim, and fold down. Great, they're ready! I poke a hole in the head with a needle first, add a touch of glue, and slide them in place. Heat up the neck hole with a hairdryer to soften the vinyl again and stuff the head back onto the body. Reunited at last! Now that she can stand up, I brush out her hair, divide it into thirds, and braid. I cut the hair off blunt at the end, and with that, all the bits and bobs are done. She's ready for assembly. Oh, goodness, there's always one more thing, isn't there? <laughs> the green ribbons to tie it all together. She gets ribbons around each braid and one at the base of her hat. And now she's done. My mom has always loved fantasy and magic and enjoys the whimsical things in life. Every single year since her childhood, she's dressed up as a witch for Halloween. For that reason, I'm naming this doll after my mother, whose name is Karen. But with a fantasy twist. Say hello to Kay Rin. Every witch needs their animal companion, and Karen's familiar is a big spooky raven. Ah! Ah! There's an entirely separate video showing how I made it, if you're interested. There's a whole spooky lineup of doll videos to continue watching, don't forget. Just check out all these incredible Halloween customs by my fellow artists and friends. A couple of us ended up making witches, completely by coincidence, of course. But it's kind of fun to think we've got a little witch brigade going on. You'll find links to everyone in the description box, and of course, we put together a playlist of all of our videos that you can binge. I hope you enjoy our videos, and from all of us, have a happy Halloween! I can't wait to watch them all. But for now, I'm off to the local pumpkin patch. Who wants to carve pumpkins? Come join us, will you? Let's go! <laughs> I can't believe you've never carved a pumpkin before. I made one each Halloween when I was a kid.
Did you do all this? <laughs> that was awesome! I never could have carved such a great pumpkin on my own, and now I've got this dope Halloween costume! <laughs> Stay artsy! Happy Halloween!